Now we already know that it is no longer news that Portugal is now opening up its data nomad visa to the entire world, meaning if you're eligible to apply for the data nomad visa, you're welcome in Portugal. And this is quite different from the D7 visa that already exists for Portugal. I made a video about it, I'll leave it here in the cards. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. I talk about eligibility requirements and things that you would need in order to apply and be eligible for the DTA Nomad visa for Portugal when it releases in October 22nd of 2022. Now, in this video, I wanna talk about the 0% taxation system that exists in Portugal that you can benefit from as a DTA Nomad. I know that a lot of people, I have a lot of DTA Nomad friends who are thinking about moving to Portugal and some of them have already moved there and that's because of a lot of the benefits that you can get from Portugal not just from the standard of living the quality of life but also because of things like you know taxes and companies in Portugal locally now about 67 percent of companies in Portugal are struggling you know to find candidates for various positions within the organization so Portugal is really honing in and really using this low tax this attractive tax system to attract global talent to bring people into the country to spend more money to engage in local services to you know find jobs and build companies within their country which is like which I think is a really smart move but I want to talk about the zero percent tax that you might be eligible for as a detail nomad of course if you own a business or if you run your if you're, if you're self-employed this is something that you want to consider of course you're not evading taxes you're not being in bad system but you're just going somewhere you know like nomad capitalists would say you're going to a place that you're treated best and this is you know something that I subscribe to the idea that I love so much and I want to talk about that in this video just a little bit. Now, in order to you know, qualify for the low tax system, the, I mean, the first step to benefiting at all from all of this, you know, tax things that we're talking about, this low tax that we're talking about is to first become a non habitual resident, meaning you're becoming an NHR in, 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 in Portugal, you're becoming a tax resident in Portugal. And the way to which you can do that is one, you have to be over the age of 18. And two, you need to stay in Portugal for 183 days or more, whether uh, consecutively or non-consecutively, meaning within a one year period, you need to be staying in Portugal for at least 183 days. And also you may not have been a tax resident of Portugal in the last five years at all. And also you need to exercise one of the I value services, what Portugal considers I value services. It's on the government website. They have a whole bunch of, you know, occupations and things you can engage in that is considered I value. Now that is the very first step to uh, benefiting from the low tax system that Portugal offers. Now that you've become a non habitual resident, that you've gotten that out of the way, some of the benefits of being a non habitual tax resident is that income obtained locally in Portugal is taxed at a flat rate of 20%, which is way lower than most of the countries in Europe. And again, when you are self-employed, if you have your own business, if your income is sourced from any company outside of Portugal, that Portugal already has a double taxation agreement in place with, I mean, in Portugal, as a, you know, different agreements with different countries, you know, double taxation treaty, meaning if your income can be taxed somewhere else, Portugal cannot tax you on the same income. And Portugal actually went into this agreement with the United States, I believe in 1994. And if your income is sourced safe from the United States, you cannot be taxed in Portugal. So you'll be taxed, I believe a 10% flat rate in the US. And also Portugal will just say, you know what? You're good to go. So if you make a hundred thousand, you're probably you know paying a fraction of that in taxes wherever it is being taxed. And also, if you have a self-employed business and you're taxed anywhere else that Portugal do not have a double taxing agreement in place, you may still be exempt, you know, from taxation as long as that income can still be taxed somewhere else. So, which is, I mean, that is really good because you now as a business owner, you're saving money, you're putting money back in your pocket, which you would otherwise, you know, be paying into tax. Now for how long this is gonna be for, I do not know and I cannot tell you. Also, I need to make a disclaimer. This is not financial advice. If you need to put some of this into place, you need to consult your financial uh, advisor. This is just a, re, a, you know, a result of research that I've done over the last couple of days. Now, if you're retiring in Portugal, meaning if you are a pensioner, your income is only subject to a 10% flat rate in Portugal, which is really good. The non habitual residency of Portugal can last up to 10 years, meaning for 10 years, you can get access to all of this tax benefits that Portugal offers to its non habitual residents. And the good thing about this is in the best case scenario, you can be eligible for 0% tax in Portugal. And this is why I think a lot of people are thinking actively about moving to Portugal. And now with the introduction of the new DTA Nomad visa, this is only going to spur a lot of people 
into action. So again, if you haven't seen that video I made about being a digital nomad in Portugal, the digital nomad visa, I'll leave it in the cards or in the description, go check it out. And also if you find anything else on this channel, consider subscribing. And if you wanna look at all the resources that I use to travel, my health insurance, you know, my banking app that I travel with all of the time, I'll leave the links to in the description, the affiliate links of course. So if you use those, I will be getting a small kickback from those as well. Uh, my name is Daniel, and if you find this video helpful, consider subscribing and I will see you in the next video.